day ladies and gentlemen, my name is Leon Weinstein and today we continue with the third part of our five-part series called Useful Idiots. Not only media, but also well-known politicians were engaged, some willingly, some probably not understanding what they were doing, in those lies and deception. Maybe you remember a name uh, Cyrus Vance, a Secretary of State in Carter administration. Of course, Democrat and pacifist. He resigned protest uh, protesting uh, attempts by President Carter to rescue American hostages in Iran. He, together with the ex-Foreign Minister of Britain, David Owen, the former Swedish uh, Prime Minister Olaf Palme, with, please listen carefully, a representative of the KGB of the Soviet Union, General Mikhail Milstein, and one of the Soviet spies in the academic circles, Georgi Arbatov, plus several other European ministers, politicians, industrialists, they organized an independent commission on disarmament, uh, later known as Palme Commission. The interesting group, uh, this interesting group, began to work together immediately after it became known, on become, become clear, I would say, that Ronald Reagan is going to be the next president of the United States of America. The real mission of the commission, in my opinion, and the opinion of many other more smarter and more more educated people, that uh, the commission uh, was working in order to disarm Western countries. Bukowski found an interesting document in the Politburo archives. This is the document, this is a letter from uh, Georgi Arbatov, uh, as I said, member of the Palme Commission. Uh, here we go. Uh, Cyrus Vance, David Owen and Egon Barr, their German counterpart and fellow commissioner, are asking me to change the wording of the proposed resolution, not the essence of it. They asked me in secret because they want the Palme Commission to express the Soviet viewpoint as committee's own, but do not want the language used in the proposition to be too Soviet style. Why? that can create a suspicion. So, here it is. Uh, looks like Owen and others are selling their motherlands. But, but we're afraid that someone can recognize the Soviet-style language and feel like something smells fish. Thus, in secret, they ask the KGB operative to modify the language that was prepared by the Soviet side, the KGB, in order to publish it as committee's own recommendations. The big question is, uh, did Vance uh, and others have cl had close ties uh, and work on behalf of the Soviets started only after the Carter administration, or was he their trusted ally while being Secretary of State, State of the United States of America? No, I, I, I hope it started after that. Together with his friends, Vance was busy building an anti-NATO uh, peace movements and, and various disarmament campaigns. They knew quite well that Soviets will not abide by, by the treaties. They never do. So the whole purpose of the uh, commission was to reduce American and European capabilities. Why? They also wanted to erase from the map um, all borders of the states worldwide and create one happy global family of human beings under whose leadership, I would ask, where everyone would be equal and equally happy. But some, of course, uh, would be more equal than others, as famously, uh, famously uh, said Orwell. I suspect Vance and, and his friends thought that they 
will be more equal. On July 17, 1979, uh, the head of the Committee of Cinematography of the Soviet Union, Philip Yermash, wrote a letter to Politburo. Uh, he reported uh, about an interesting meeting he had during the festival in Cannes. Uh, Yermash was approached by a famous American film director, Francis Coppola, who told him that he has a message from President Carter to the chairman of the Communist Party of the USSR, Yuri Andropov. Carter offered to create together with the Soviets a film about disarmament uh, that Carter was advocating in, in the US and, and the world. And in order to walk, work hand in hand with the Soviets, he was willing to give them total ideological and production control over the content of such film. What an interesting and novel idea, right? The famous and loved by, by everyone in America Coppola agreed to that and went to discuss it with the Soviets. Once again, I want you to understand that, that what was happening, Francis Coppola was offering uh, to Soviets to produce propaganda and deception, and Coppola would allow them to use his name and reputation to lie to the American public. The Carter-Coppola duo were not planning to disclose to, to, you know, to American public that this film uh, would be pure Soviet propaganda and lies, but quite opposite they were planning to pretend that the film is true and nothing but the truth. Were Carter and Coppola just useful idiots or something much more dangerous? Apparently, both thought that disarmament was so important that they were ready to lie, cheat and God knows what else in order to make it happen. If you think that lying to the American public uh, is a thing of the past, please recall President Obama, Schumer, Reid, Pelosi, telling us time after time that if you want to keep your doctor, you can keep it. If you want to keep your insurance company, you can keep it, knowing full well that those were outright lies. They did because they thought that the goal of providing care to everyone they knew that it's not for everyone but kind of pretended is so important that they can lie cheat and bribe in order to implement this you know obamacare in america or in simple words they all carter obama Vance, coppola schumer pelosi thought that goal justifies means. If, in this train of thought, I believe that something is really important, then they can try to achieve it by, by any means necessary. Just wonderful, right? When Western politicians were cheering to Nikita Khrushchev for his revelations about Stalin and, and for his warming of relations and spring in the USSR, the Soviet Politburo were preparing actions to get what they want by any means possible. Any means. So, how they are different. As an example, what Western idiots didn't know is that on September 9, in September 3, 1953, Nikita Sergeyevich Khrushchev, great peacemaker, signed a directive. Here it is. Ah, uh, here it is. In view of the special nature of tasks assigned to the KGB, created a new department. They called it Department 12. And all work of this department shall be carried out in keeping with the rules of strict secrecy. So what's the work? 
Department 12 shall be assigned the following tasks. Acts of sabotage in the Western world. Acts of terror in regard to the most active enemies of the Soviet Union from among capitalistic statesmen. Abduction and transfer to the Soviet territory of persons in case of, in case of special interest. Using bribery and other means in case of necessity. Then select and train in the USSR, set up clandestine residentura, resident spies, and underground groups capable of organizing and carrying out acts of sabotage and terrorism. Resident and group of agents of Department 12 in capitalist countries shall not have any contact with local communist organizations or recruit agents among communists. Interesting, right? Uh, do you remember killing, poisoning of father and daughter Skripal in London? Do you remember uh, murder of the Russian oligarch Boris Berezovsky, who opposed Putin? Murder of a great poet Galich? Murders of Tbilisi, Paris, Paris, London, Praga, Berlin, and, and countless others. It's all done by the Department 12 of the KGB that was started by a great reformer, Nikita Khrushchev, supported by obstructionists Andropov, developed by arch-reformer Gorbachev, and strengthened and continued by the present Kremlin bloody crime lord Vladimir Putin. West all those criminologists, Sovietologists, historians, historians, political advisors understood nothing, or close to nothing, about Soviet mind. About Soviet system, new breed of people called Homo Sovieticus, not Homo sapiens, unlike others, and how and why this system worked for 70 years. They couldn't even imagine how amoral the Soviet citizens were. Not only the elites, but the people at large. Soviets, on the other hand, understood Western elites, Western liberals, Western useful and untamed idiots quite well. At the start of the 70s, KGB realized that these so-called progressives have huge heart lots of good intentions and honorable emotions. However, almost no brains. And the next phase of the Useful Idiots program kicked in. New KGB directives ordered the State Committee on Radio and Television and, as well, the uh, Academy of Science, please do not be surprised. During all Soviet years, and, and now, in the years of Putin's regime, journalists, writers, musicians, professors at universities, and scientists were reporting to the KGB and performing tasks for the KGB, both inside and outside of Mother Russia. One of the tasks in the 70s, and until current time, as a matter of fact, was to infiltrate liberal circles of the West influence them and look for potential recruits for the Foreign Department of the KGB, now called FSB. No difference. After Brezhnev's visit to the USA in 1973, Politburo fine-tuned the propaganda to, in order to divide the US and Europe and generally decrease the influence of the United States, an arch-enemy of the Soviets, on the world stage. On July 24, 1979, Kremlin issued the following decree. Instruction to all Soviet citizens <clears throat> who are taking part in the propaganda efforts of the USSR and abroad. We need to start more actively using Western media for distribution of the Soviet point of view. For that, you need to initiate contacts with European and American journalists, editors, hosts of radio and TV programs, and offer them projects that will help to promote to their 
respect, the respective countries that Soviet view of life is more beneficial to regular people than the Western capitalistic system. The Committee of the State Security, this is KGB, uh, will oversee the implementation of this project. You can always contact your supervisors at KGB. So scientists and artists had their own supervisors at KGB and KGB and use connections and abilities of this organization, organization to reach those goals. Uh, for better understanding, dear viewers, abilities of KGB include bribery, blackmailing, and murder. Let's stop here. Next chapter will be even more explosive than this one. Bukowski book will be sold on Amazon and other book selling sites starting May 2019. My books, Capitalism 101 and Looking for Hugh, you can download from the same Amazon and other sites or you can, you can buy a soft cover you know, paper book on the internet.